Hey guys, what's up? Martin here from RV Street. So in today's RV maintenance video, I'm going to show you another version of how to bring back the shine on your RV. I call this condition cloudiness. It's just a little cloudy in spot, but it could be better. So stay with me on this. You're going to love this video and how to bring back the shine on your RV. Details coming up on RV Street. So let's get right to it. So those of you who follow our channel, you know that our coach is uh, 10 years old. We bought it years ago, and when we first bought it, it didn't look like it does now. The previous owner uh, did not take care of it well and had it parked out in the sun, and this whole entire driver's side was beginning to oxidize. And before I could even begin to think about bringing back the shine, I had to do a compounding and get that oxidation off first. So we've been down here in our GV now for about three weeks, and the day after we arrived, Joni and I went right to work and did our biannual full detail wash. It was a few days later, I was walking around the coach and looking at different things, and I came across this section right here. And I got to looking at it, and I'm like, you know, this does not look right. This is not good enough. If you looked at it straight on, it looked fine. If you looked at it from this side, from the sun, it looked fine. But if you looked at it this direction, where the sun coming in this way, I could see these little patches of cloudiness or dull areas. I did a little video clip and some pictures to show you. I want to kind of give you an idea of what it looked like and what I was seeing. And this is totally unacceptable to me. So how did it get this way? Well. Like I said, when we got down here to RGV, I had just got through doing a 380 mile drive. And the next day when we did this wash, I was a little tired and I thought, you know, this doesn't need polishing. I usually will touch up this area, but I thought, you know what, it doesn't need it. And so I skipped this part and that was the mistake. This panel right here really likes to be polished twice a year. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how to bring that shine back. I find polishing when it's cool is the best time to do it and also in the shade. I never ever polish in direct sunlight. And right now it's about 10 o'clock in the morning, it's about 75 degrees, it's a beautiful morning, perfect time to tackle this polishing. Even though I washed it a couple, three weeks ago. You know, it still now is going to have some dust on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the dust with my wash wax all mop head. So let's go ahead and do that first. So I'm going to take my wash wax all mop head. And of course, most of you know, there's a wet side and there's a dry side. They're labeled right there, wet and dry. So you take the wet side and you just put a few little squirts on there and you begin to clean. This is one of those tools I just love. It makes those little quick washes so easy to do. Okay, so the equipment I'm going to be using is my MT300 Meguiar's dual action variable speed polisher. You can see right here has a variable speed dial right here. You can go high or low, and when you pull the trigger, you can lock it in place. You don't have to hold on to the trigger. When you buy one of these, you also have to buy the separate backing plate right here. And on this uh, polisher, I use six and a half inch foam pads. They stick on with Velcro. And even though these pads, when you buy them, it says for waxing, these are also excellent for polishing too. So this is a setup that we're gonna be using and we're gonna be putting it on a medium speed, about four to 5,000 RPMs. It's always good to use nice, clean pads. Uh, after you use them, you can just throw them in the washer, wash them in the washing machine, but don't put them in the dryer. Set them outside and let them air dry. Another thing about these pads, the reason I buy them in three packs, is I use two of them to polish the coach. When I do my uh, biannual detail, it takes me two to polish, one for half, 
one for the other half, and that leaves my third clean pad to do the Rejects final coat. The polish I'm going to be using is Meguiar's Ultimate Polish. I love this stuff. And when you buy the polisher, they throw in this little uh, apron. And uh, at first I thought, man, I'm not going to use it. What am I going to use that for? But I found out that was a mistake. It's got these little pockets. You just slide that thing in there, and man, it just makes... You just grab it, squirt it on there, drop it back in the pocket, and it makes the whole process so much easier. So what I'm going to do is do section, three foot sections at a time. I'm going to start from the top and work to the bottom. I'm going to apply the polish to the pad on medium speed, and I'm going to polish a three foot section. Right afterwards, I'm going to wipe it off with a microfiber cloth and look at it. You do not let the polish dry like you would a wax. Okay, it doesn't need to sit. You polish, you wipe it off, you look. If it needs more polishing, you do more polishing. If it's good, you move down to the next section. Okay, let's get started. We're going to take this polish and we're going to just squirt a little bit on here like this. And I'm going to, I'm going to start off over here right behind the slide and I'm going to work that way starting at the top. That looks good. Oh yeah, this is coming out nice. You notice how I'm doing this with one hand? That's why I chose this polisher. It's only 5.3 pounds. There is one other popular um, polisher out there made by Draught. Uh, I carry that also in my Amazon store, but it's over eight pounds. And when you're doing large areas for 70, 80, 90 feet all the way around, man, having three pounds, four pounds lighter means a lot of difference, trust me. Just thought I'd tell you that. <laughs> One other little tip here. When you first start out putting polish on a new pad, you know, the, that new pad will soak in a lot of that polish. But the further along you go and you keep adding uh, polish in here, this pad will begin to load up and you won't have to put in near the amount of polish on the pad as you move on down. So let's continue. Okay, so. I'm just about done and I want to give you kind of a close-up shot of exactly what I do and how I handle this. So I put, you can see my pad's gotten pretty loaded up here, but I'm going to put a little bit more here to give you a demonstration. The first thing you do is when you come up here, you kind of smear it first like that. And when you're polishing, you're not bearing down on this, okay? You're allowing the weight and the pad to kind of do its work, okay? So just to demonstrate as a close-up, I smear it on and then I pull the trigger, lock it in place and begin to polish. Did you see that? I'm going in a random motion, circles up and down, sideways, but I'm not bearing down on it. I'm letting the polisher do the work and then I come back with a microfiber cloth and I wipe it off. You get kind of that first coat off. Then I take it and flip it over to where there's a dry side. And I come back now and I hand polish it. And as I proceeded down this side here, uh, there was about two or three places, especially right in here and one back here, where I had to go back three times. I polished it, wiped it, look, nope, not good enough. Went and did it again, went and did it again. So it's just, it's just patience, you know, but you guys can do this. This is why I take the time to show you guys uh, the steps and the close-ups and how you do this. I mean, if you were to pay a company to come out 
and polish like this your whole coach and rejects it and the whole thing, we're talking hundreds of dollars. Uh, what they mostly do is come out there and spray something on there and they'll wipe it off and say, okay, that's done. <laughs> but this is true polishing and getting that cloudiness, as I put it. I don't even know if there's such a word, but that's what I call it. But there you go. This side now is polished. Now we're going to rejects. As you guys that follow me know, I don't use wax anymore. I use rejects. And rejects, two coats of this, two light coats. Two light coats of this on your coach will block 100% of all the UV rays that comes and destroys these RVs because that's what, that's what hurts these things is the sun. This stuff here was originally made for aircraft, but they've branched off in a lot of other areas. And I use this now exclusively instead of wax. Let me show you how I apply this. The first thing I do when I get my new pads, as you can see, I label them. I put polish on the pads that I use for polish and rejects for the one I dedicate to rejects. I put it on the polisher. I'll take out the rejects and I'll apply just a little bit. The key to using rejects is not, let me underline that word, not putting it on thick. You want to put on a thin coat. And I like using my polisher to do that. You can put it on by hand if you want to, but I'm a firm believer in high technology. <laughs> so I'll put this on my pad and I'll go lightly all the way down, put on some more lightly all the way down. By the time I start over here and I end up over there, it'll be 10 to 15 minutes. I come right back here and I start wiping it off with my microfiber cloth by hand, not a polisher. And don't forget, you always apply this in the shade and when the motorhome is cool, never when it's in the sun. Okay guys, so I just finished and you can see, look at that, boy, that sun is just now starting to come around. So I got this done just in the nick of time, still nice and shaded and everything, but it's all polished, it's all, rejects and man it looks fantastic and they get down here on a another angle boy that just came out great what a difference you guys probably have a stubborn area on your coach um, as I do. This is this is this this one panel that uh, I really need to kind of keep up on it. I polish it like this twice a year. Where the rest of the coach I can not I can polish once a year and rejects it. But this one particular panel needs a little more attention. But as you can see, it's easy to do. And this is why I take the time to show you how I take care of our coach because I know most of you've got these kind of things going on with yours and you guys can do this. I mean, if you got the right equipment and you take your time, boom, this, you know, you get the shine right back. Those of you who haven't subscribed to our channel, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Subscribing is free. And when you push the red uh, subscribe button, don't forget to ring the bell off to the right. So you'll be notified the next time I upload my next video. Also, if you'll go to our main YouTube channel page, and you go to the playlist and click playlist. There is a boatload of maintenance and DIY and upgrade videos there that I know that uh, you'll learn a lot from those and help you along in taking care of your coach. You guys can do this. You guys can do 80 to 90% of the things yourself that the coach needs. Just have the right tools and see how it's done. Everything I used here on this job I'll put links below to all the products down in the description area. And down there also will be a link to my Amazon store. In our store, just go to the washing, detailing, and outside care category, and it'll all be right there. Once again, guys, Joni and I want to really thank you so much for using our Amazon store and the links in, the, in each video that we produce. It's just been such a blessing that you guys support us by buying your gear. Uh, through our store. I mean, it's just, we just can't thank you enough. And also because of you, we have surpassed now a million views on our channel. So thank you, thank you. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. 
This is how to bring back the shine in your RV. Until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.